Hey guys, welcome to this free lesson on the second derivative test for local extrema. So this is finding max and min's with the second derivative. As a reminder, you want to pause and try the examples when prompted, and there are free guided notes available at divideandconquermath.com. And hey, while you're here, if you want to like my video or subscribe to my channel or share it with your friends or leave me a comment, any of that just helps me support, uh, helps support free math on the internet, and I really appreciate those kinds of feedback. Okay. So here's the idea. Um, we've talked about in other videos uh, the idea of critical points, maximum and minimum. So you can see for sure, right, like in this function, here's my max, here's my minimum, or here's my min, a local min, a local max, a local min. Okay. And then also, you can also see, like, this is definitely concave down, this is concave up, down, up, this is up. This would be down, this would be up. If you aren't familiar with those terms, you need to go back and watch those videos before you watch this. So I'm assuming you already understand that. Okay, so now I want to make one more observation. When the graph it has a maximum, look at the actual shape of the function. So in both cases, the max here, the max here. Is the graph concave up or is it concave down at that point? It is concave down, okay? And then look at the minimums minimum, 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 and look, each time we have a minimum, the graph is concave up. So what this tells us is that we can actually use the second derivative to help us determine max and mins. So now let me show you the second derivative test for local extrema. And I would recommend that you pause the video and write this all down before you go on. So suppose f double prime is continuous on an open interval that contains the critical point c, so you also have f prime of c equals zero. Then, if f double prime of c is less than zero, if it's negative, then f has a local maximum there, and if f double prime is greater than zero, i.e. it's positive, then f has a local minimum at x equals c. Okay, so there's a few things kind of buried into this, and there's, there is a third part of, about this. You could also have that your second derivative could equal zero, and then the test fails, and then you'd probably have to try the first derivative test. And it's also possible that c could be neither a local min or max. All right. So going back to this screen, I just want to point out a few things. This is bringing up that you need to know both the critical points. So you have this, or you know, this could also be, I guess, undefined. So you have to know your critical points, and you have to also know the second derivative to do this. This is information you have to have before you start this. Then if your second derivative with that critical point is negative, then what does that mean? If the second derivative is negative, that means that it's concave down, so then you know you've got a max there. And if it's concave up, then you know you've got a min there. So that's kind of the, the idea. So sometimes people like to draw pictures to help them understand this. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna use the second derivative test for local extrema, and then I wanna compare this to the first derivative test. The natural question here is, what is the point of this? <laughs> why, why do we need another test? Don't we already have one? So I want to kind of justify this to you by showing you both tests. So let's start with this example. So first things first, I want you to find the first and second derivative. So pause the video here, play, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. So there's my first and second derivative. And now what I also have to do, I have to find my critical points. Now the word critical point has to do with the first derivative. So I have to either find where this first derivative is undefined or where it equals zero. This is a polynomial, so it won't be undefined. So I just have to set it equal to zero. And ultimately you're gonna get that you have a critical point at x equals two. Okay, so now this is gonna be almost silly in this case, but this is a really good kind of first example on this. So now I have to examine the second derivative um, at my critical point. Now notice in this case, my second derivative is a constant. So what that means is if I plug in the critical point into this, what will this equal? Well, this will equal two. It doesn't matter what you plug into this. I could put, put in seven and the answer would still be two. That's what this means, right? To be a constant function. So this is two and all you care about here is the result. So this is greater than zero. You know that it's positive. So that means then that this is concave up, right? So what that means is, two is a minimum. 
And this should make sense actually, because if you think about this, this is a parabola. So it does open up, so it should have a minimum. So we can intuitively trust this. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna compare this whole thing that we just did to the first derivative test. So we know that this is our um, first derivative and then we already found my critical point was two. So now what I want you to do is go ahead and create the table that's associated with this so that you can analyze where it's increasing and decreasing and all that. So pause the video here, create that table and hit play when you're ready. Okay, so let me just fill in that table. Okay, so in each interval, I just have to select a test point and determine whether or not the sign of f prime is positive or negative. So without going into all of that, because I've done that in a lot of other videos, so the sign here would be negative, the sign here would be positive. So now what I see here is that there must be a min at two. So this just confirms what we did in the other test, right? So now for that question of why would I even use this, right? Um, think about how much work this is versus this. We didn't have to create a table here. We didn't have to do all of that. This is actually very efficient, but it depends on what you're doing. So sometimes if you're just trying to figure out whether or not you have a maximum or a minimum, this will just get the job done and you don't have to fuss with the table. Sometimes, however, you need all the information in the table. So it just kind of depends and you will learn kind of when you want to do the first derivative test versus when you want to do the second derivative test, but they're both important and you need to know them both. So now what I want you to do is pause the video here and I want you to try this first, just try using that second derivative test for local extrema. So try to go through the whole thing on your own. Hit play when you're ready to compare your answer. Okay, so first I'll start by writing out the first and second derivative. And so now I can see that there's no place where the first derivative is undefined, but I do need to set this equal to zero and solve it, so I'll do that. And so now I've written out what all my critical points are based off of my answer here. Okay, so let me clear off a little bit of space here. And now let's actually do the, the second derivative. So I have to take each one of these critical points and plug them into the second derivative. And all I care about is whether or not this is gonna be positive or negative. So in plugging this in to the second derivative, so just notice what will happen here. This will end up being something positive, right? Cause this will end up being four times 12. That's way bigger than 16. So this is something positive. So what that means is we definitely have a local min at x equals negative two. So moving on to zero, so again, just trying to figure out is it positive or negative, this will definitely be negative, therefore. And finally, if I plug in two, so again, that'll give me the same thing, so this will definitely be bigger than zero, so. Okay, so that was nice and simple actually to kind of figure out just if I have local mins or maxes. So now I want you to do the same thing, um, and I'll just remind you, so our critical points were at x equals uh, negative two, zero and two. So I want you to now use the first derivative test on this. So create that whole table and set it all up just to confirm your answers and compare the process. Hit play when you've got it all out. Okay, so first I'm gonna set up the table. And now from here, so I'm not gonna show all the work to come up with all the test points. I've covered that in lots of other videos. So you can watch one of my videos on the first derivative test if you don't know how to do that. But I'll just show you the signs of F prime. And so now from here I can see, so this is going, this is going from decreasing to increasing. So here that tells me that this is gonna be a min, this will be a max, and then this will be a min. So now I can summarize. And so there would be your answer. So that covers this test. So I know it can be a little bit confusing. So you have to practice it a lot and you really wanna kind of stress kind of what everything means. Sometimes drawing pictures is really helpful. And so that covers this video. I have another video where I do more examples if you wanna see more examples. Um, so I'll see you in the next one or otherwise I'll catch you guys in another video. Thanks for watching.